Evans about in Colorado Springs doing a video today, and it is going to be off the chain. I mean, I'm so excited about this. There's a collection here. You guys know the collection videos I brought you before. If you hadn't seen them all, you got to go check them, see some other videos on the channel. Unbelievable Mustang. Stay tuned to the whole video. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe, do all the good stuff. We have found a car. You guys need to know about this car. I want you to meet the owner. Aaron, how's it going, buddy? Hey, good. Nice to meet you. Man, I can't believe that we got hooked up. I'm out here in Colorado, and I'm so glad you answered the uh, request to say, hey, you know, I've got some cool Mustangs. And so let's just talk about this one. Let's, let's talk about the rarity of this car, how you got it, why you have it. Why is this 93 Cobra so special? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing being special um, for all, I mean, Fox by Addicts, you know, the pre-production, um, the 18 pre pre-production cars that were put out there. Um, and I've always wanted one. Um, I'm a teal freak myself, um, but I do love red. Um, so once I came across this one, that's where I looked at the wife and I said, you know, we have to have this car. This is the one. Having a pre-production uh, wasn't so much going crazy over the EY code. And then once, you know, of course, I learned that, um, you know, being with the EY, it's special, it's rare. Uh, but my biggest go-to thing is having a pre-production car that was built in 92, um, taken on, on displays wherever they were located, whether it be Detroit, um, California, Florida, you know, wherever Ford had them at the time, just kind of that history on it. Um, and then just really a huge bonus of having the EY code um, where there's one of nine and, you know, who knows how many are in, in existence. If anyone knows that, just kind of post that up. That'd be kind of cool. Um, so I think that was really neat. And then, you know, I'm not a leather fan myself, but it's got leather and, and uh, I don't mind the leather. I enjoy it. And, and I think just at the end of the day, little cool things like I learned off a of fellow um, pre-production SMEs on what makes it different. Kind of little quick things like you can see here. Uh, the bumper is just completely different, kind of how they're figuring out the bracket um, and put that up there. So I just learned that from, from the pros. And again, I'm not a pro by any means. I'm, I'm out here to learn, have fun. Uh, but little things like that, if you guys see some other things, just kind of throw it out there. But that one really caught me off guard, learned that, that little bumper situation and why it's so different and what, what Ford was trying to figure out in 92. So that's really what attracted me to this. Um, you know, and being that I'm a teal lover, I'm always looking for like seven and nine and try to track them down and then come, come to find out this summer and last summer um, up in Detroit, uh, Ford actually still owns them. I think one of them they bought back and they are sitting in their little private uh, collection vault that hopefully one day I can break into and uh, check it all out. But that's where seven and nine are. Um, but to see, you know, these guys, uh, number 12, I've been in communication with, with two other guys that have come forward like, hey, I got pre-production cars. I think it's just kind of cool. It's unique. Where are they all? And at one point in time, could we have them all together, the existing ones that we know, um, you know, just for one day of a, of a photo shoot or just a big car show, Central America, I think that would be excellent and fun. And I'd love that. Yeah. Okay. Because this thing has, I think, a little bit of a story. We might even need the viewer's help to figure out some of the story <laughs> with this. So first off, let's just check out this coolness right here. Right there in the bottom left-hand corner, paint code EY. Wow. And we've got some other cool history in the trunk, don't we, on this one? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Okay, let's show them that. We'll so I've just been, I've been trying to collect some things just to have. Um, I'm going to take it down to Dallas. I'll have this at the show. So if someone wants to come up and just kind of see the, the Marty Report, a little history on it, the window sticker, uh, things of that sort. You can come just check it out, just read it, you know. So I thought that was pretty cool, just have the basics in here. Yeah, let's see that one up close. I want to see that one. Uh, which one? This one? Yeah. Yeah. So there's the, the actual numbers. Right there. One of nine with the EY Vibrant Red. So what we know about this obviously being an EY paint code. What's the difference? Difference is not, they didn't put the clear coat on. Um, okay. Why they did that, maybe some other SMEs want to jump in on what they were actually testing or the reasons why. I never got in the weeds of all that, you know, what the difference is, why they didn't put it on. I think it was more of testing it out and then after that, then all the rest of them, then they put the clear coat on. So I think that was just the gist and then they gave it the EY um, paint code. Um, but all the more, like I say, the SMEs come on and say, this is why, and I was, I was present that day, and 
and this is why it all happened. Maybe it happened to fruition right there in one of the, the conference rooms and sitting there talking about it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I never really get huge in the weeds on them, but that's kind of the, the gist of it with the EY. Yeah. So when they added the paint color, I mean, they added the clear coat, then it changes to performance red. Yes. ES. The code is ES, correct? Correct. Yep. yep. So kind of some cool little tidbit facts there, but this being only one of nine and this code EY with no clear coat. I mean, it's just a, a really cool example. Yeah. Now this car, we've got some other little stories and little things about it, right? So somebody looks like they tried, tried to, to bump that out too not, hard. Not knowing what they had. Got a little bit happy with the uh, wheel. There. Yep. So tell us about the interior. So the interior is pretty much stock in this one. Um, whether this car has... I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna get the lighting better so we can see it. Yeah. But just you know, pretend like I just asked you. Okay. So, so tell us about the interior of this car. So interior, pretty much everything that you see in here is stock. Um, as the story goes, if there's 175,000 miles on it, um, just trying to get the emissions off of California uh, to get the actual records on that, odometer shows 75. Um, the one thing that really caught my attention was the driver's seat, and I thought that was just very weird because, you know, we've all been in our Foxes and high miles and rips and tears and, you know, uh, heavier set guys and where you're, where you're ripping the little lumbar from our, our uh, love handles there on the side. This one was more unique, and it really had me question every time I'd sit there and stare at this, like, why are there such weird scratch marks in this seat? What happened here? Like, was someone just sitting here filing at this thing? Um, Sure, in the center, you know, when you sit down, of course, that's going to get worn, torn, all that stuff. So that's when I started digging in, doing some research. Um, Don Gresser had this for, for a good amount of years. He gave me a lot of history on this car. Um, but the seat thing really threw me off, and that's where I dug in more um, to where I went to the actual Ford delivery, was at the DSO, um, and I tracked down one of the, the uh, gentlemen in California that was delivered to, Jeff Friedstadt, um, he was one of the big head guys there in California that this car was delivered to. So I found him on the report and I actually reached out to him, got his contact information. Um, he was very receptive, answered a lot of questions. We talked about this car um, being delivered and I was like, Jeff, what is the deal with this seat? What do you think happened to this seat? What would be the history that this seat would be so torn up? And immediately he's like, oh, well that makes complete sense. This car was a Hollywood display car its entirety in 1992, the end of uh, 92. And he's like, for all the stack displays, we always had a canine in the driver's seat. Um, and I was like, that would make complete sense. You know, some people go crazy out there. I've posted this before and they're like, you're nuts. This is 175,000 mile car. That's what you get for sitting in it. Sure, I got it. But when you look, at, look up close to this and look at the weird tears in this, the weird sections and it's just nice little slits, um, I think it looks like a big German chef. <laughs> That's what I imagine. Here, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, by the way, if you're out there watching this video and you have a picture of that, of a dog in this car, we need you to send it to us. Yeah. All right? Hit us up. Boxbodyfx at gmail.com. Yeah. I have, I have searched countless hours days. And I just gave up. I'm like, this is ridiculous to find someone that's got an old school, you know, back in the day, we take our picture and then you put it in a shoe box, which is down in your basement somewhere buried away, but maybe you have the picture in Hollywood with the canine or several canines uh, throughout different displays uh, sitting in the driver's seat. It just kind of goes with the story of why this seat is so oddly torn up in such a crazy way. Um, and then the passenger seat's in pretty good condition, you know, yeah. uh, leather interior. So, but Now you also have some documentation on that as well, don't you? Yeah, I do. So I reached, I reached out to Jeff and I was like, Jeff, man, this is crazy. Can you give me something? Something to say your story, you know, after, after you're gone or not receptive to be answering questions like this, can you give us something? So he's like, I'll happily do this. Um, so he put his title on there, um, who he worked for, um, the information. I have the, the whole DSO code, um, you know, how it was ordered from Ford under him. Um, and then he just put it in here in writing um, to say, yeah, that, that's how we displayed it in Hollywood was the canines in the driver's seat, which... Why in the hell did they do that? I don't know. Maybe you guys had the answers why they did that. That was just a cool thing in 92. Uh, give us that information. But shout out to Jeff, really, and, and everyone else that, that is a historian. And if someone reaches out to you trying to get the history on the car, um, you know, I really want to give those props that 
that means a lot to be able to give up information. It's not something of like, oh, this increases the value of this card, you know, $25,000. I don't really care about that. It's just the history on the car that I think is unique and that I just want to keep with this car forever. Um, having this here and keeping that seat in there because I think that's pretty cool. I'm not going to replace the seat. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I think it's awesome. Let's see this engine. Yeah. So engine, all stock. So here's another unique thing about this uh, pre-production is in 92, so the story goes, um, this this is the first 93 Cobra with the, uh, the whole smog system in the emissions and in California. So this is the very first test. What was different from this one between a regular, you know, 19, let's say 1989, 90 Fox body. I don't know what the emissions, why it made it different. I just know that this was the first 93 Cobra in 92 that they had the emissions and still to this day is all fully intact to include all the exhaust below. Everything is on here because it was always doing emissions uh, since living in California its whole life. Man, this is really cool. Plus, you know it's early too because the side of this intake. Oh, yeah. Rich, you know, I mean, that's all smooth. Flat side. Barely ever see those. Right there. I don't know the exact number of how many of those are out there, but I know it's only the early ones. So the, the, you would obviously think. The mat have it from a pre-production. Yeah. It'd be early. Right. So the magical number is 500. Okay. So somewhere around number 500 is where the flat intake went away. Gotcha. There you go. See? Got to learn something every day. Man, this is super cool. Another cool thing, I don't know why, but, you know, more historians out there, but this one's got two Vintegs over here, and there's no accident on this one. Uh, there's nothing on here. There's not a Vintag on the... the um, hood here um, but as the story goes I think Don Gresser told me when he picked this car up actually it's kind of a sickening story but very interesting I think he's the one that told me um, that he found it on the side of a road at like you know just a regular uh, car sales um, lot just there on the side of the road and someone just happened to be selling it so I think Don was the third owner so the second owner definitely neglected the situation of this car how it got passed off, where it was sitting, and kind of how it got handed over. But nonetheless, she's safe now. That is unreal. I mean, to think that a car like this could have sat like that at just a regular car <laughs> dealership back in the day. But it's amazing that that just speaks to the volumes of these type of cars and the rarity of them. How back then, they were just kind of newer and not really rare. But now, mm -hmm. talking about 2023, mm -hmm. and just the value of this car, the 93 Cobras are going crazy. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, I wouldn't even guess the value of this car right now, but a 93 Cobra, one of nine pre-production EY paint code, not going to be cheap. <laughs> yeah. Um, not going to be cheap, but I am so glad that you have it. Obviously, it's great that you have such a love for these cars and, you know, the history and just the collecting. I think it's amazing, man. What, a, what an awesome car. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoy, everyone, and, and uh, call out some cool little pre-production facts and and some cool information for all of us out there. I love hearing it. I love seeing it. Just cool little information. We just keep it going uh, for, for the uh, pre-productions and the EYs. Absolutely. Hey, thanks, guys. Make sure you put it in the comments. Put those comments out there. Make sure you say you like the video and hit that subscribe button. And go check out the collection video on all of his amazing vehicles that's also coming up as the rest of them are outside and in another building right next door. You won't want to miss.